hello guys on my last uh, tutorial we spoke about the instance parameter and the database configuration parameters uh, like how can we see, see those parameters and how can we update those parameters and after updating uh, how do we make sure that the parameter has taken effect right so today uh, i'm going to speak about some of the instance parameters and just the uh, very important parameters on from the instance because there's so many parameters over there okay and uh, i'm going to explain uh, what each parameter does okay so to look at the parameters for instance configuration we know that the command is tb to get uh, tbm cfg right so let's go through some of the important parameters uh, if you see here uh, it says cpu speed and common bandwidth so all these uh, parameters we will not even uh, use it uh, when you create the instance uh, basically it takes input parameters from the system and all those uh, kind of configuration and it updates the value okay so basically uh, we will never touch uh, cpu speed common bandwidth uh, and many other parameters on this instance configuration uh, next is the numdb parameter uh, here it says 32 so basically what it what it means is like we can have uh, uh, 32 databases inside this instance okay so if you try to create uh, one more database like it might throw some error or something like that uh, so basically uh, in a real scenario we have never touched touch these parameters okay uh, one most important parameter is federated so what does federation means now usually uh, in on a on a live business uh, we cannot depend on a single database like you cannot only depend on db2 right so there might be uh, uh, the business might be adding some other um, new businesses and uh, and he might be acquiring some other business from some other location and they might be using a different database right and uh, for example your source might be some oracle database or a sql server database and but you want to fetch all those data inside inside your uh, db2 database right so to enable that feature to enable heterogeneous databases or sources uh, we have a concept called federation to enable that uh, we need to set this parameter to yes so once you set it to yes you can basically create different objects which you can use to access um, different uh, heterogeneous database like oracle or sql server or something like that okay so this federation is uh, if you turn this on then only it will work okay the next one would be uh, like the jdk path you know uh, the java development kit will be installed uh, so this is the default path where it will be installed um, then diag level and notification level okay by default the diag level will be set to three okay so uh, basically most uh, all the important information will be there in the diag log when I say dialog, it's it's basically error log uh, because any uh, issue which uh, comes in DB2, and if you want, th that is the first uh, uh, level of check you need to do. You have to go and check these logs. Okay, so one is the DB2 dialog, and one is the no notification log. The difference between this uh, dialog and notification log is basically the notification will have only important messages. For example, if you start and st start an instance, stop an instance, here. So it will just say started the instance at this time stop the instance at this time so any uh, any kind of error for starting or uh, stopping it will not be there in the notification log so the detailed information will be there in the DAG log okay uh, so basically the default for DAG log and notification log is 3 okay and you are troubleshooting some you know um, this uh, you want more information and you are troubleshooting something then basically you can increase the level of DAG level to 4 so it will log more information okay um, but I would suggest uh, like, uh, leaving at the default at 3 and uh, in case you need it you can turn it on to 4 okay so it will generate more uh, information in the log so basically it means like, you need more space okay uh, the DAG path is basically the location where your uh, this DAG log and notification logs will exist okay in this case it, uh, this is the location and this is the default location so if you don't like the default location and you want to change uh, your DAG file and uh, notification log file basically you can go and update this uh, path okay and now what does all DAG path means okay um, for example if 
because of some file system corruption or you you have, you have unmounted the file system where your uh, dag path is there right so in this case it's home db to ns t1 sql db to dump uh, for some reason it is not available in those cases we can use the alternate dag path okay so for example if i give dag path a c drive and alternate path is d drive uh, only if the c c drive is not available the logs will be generated on the alternate dag path okay so only during the unavailability of the dag path the logs will be on the alternate dag path okay so the uh, next parameter dag size so here it is set to 0 and uh, the value it's 0 mb it says 0 mb right so the values will be in 0 mb now what does it mean okay now when you set this parameter to 0 it means that you're going to ha only have one dag log and one notification log okay and the size will go to a indefinite like, uh, how much space you have on the file system so it will grow till that level okay now if you set this value to a manual value what happens in that case okay now it's a little bit tricky so you have to um, listen very carefully here now for example if i set this value to 10 mb okay i'm setting this tag size to 10 mb it basically means is the 90% of the 10 MB will be allocated to the DAG log and 10% of that log will be allocated to the notification log okay so out of 10 MB 9 MB will go to the DAG log and 1 MB will be allocated to the notification log okay now the next part I said the 9 MB will be allocated to the DAG log so how it is allocated okay so let's see that um, so I told you like um, DAG, will, DAG log will have a size of 9 MB now when you start the instance it will create one file called DAG db to DAG dot one dot log okay as soon as the log is filled up to when um, when one MB when it is one is uh, like when it reaches one MB it will create another file called db to DAG dot two log Two dot log. So basically, this DAG dot one log will be one MB size. And once it reaches one MB threshold, it will create another file DB to DAG dot two dot log. Again, it will be one MB. So like that, every time the file reaches one MB, it will be renamed to four, five, six like that. Okay. So once it reaches nine MB, again it will create a DB to DAG dot ten dot log, and it will remove the old file okay so any point in time there can be only 10 logs in the DAG path I know it's a bit confusing but uh, uh, the, uh, the value I told like the 90% of the uh, the DAG size so 90% of the DAG size is 9 MB and that 9 MB will be allocated in a in, in uh, 9, 9 MB will be allocated to 10 files okay so basically uh, 10 divided by 9 okay and there and there can be only 10 log uh, diag log files in the system so every time it reaches the 10th log um, it's 11th log it will delete the oldest file and it will generate a new one okay so once you try it practically you will understand how um, that works uh, and the same st um, stand uh, true for the notification log also okay so when it when i said uh, 10 mb uh, so 9 mb for the dag log and 1 mb for the notification log so there will be 10 notification file of 0.1 mb 0.1 mb like that okay and uh, the log file uh, the notification log will be created only when the first one uh, gets filled up okay and the uh, and the rotation will be going on okay so you don't have to worry about the size of the logs um if you see it's a db to database monitor switches right uh, basic, uh, basically we will turn these parameters to on only when you ha when you want to do <laughs> capture some performance metrics and you want to take snapshot and those kind of things uh, for your test machine i don't say that you need to collect this information but for your production uh, you will need it right so basically t you know, so uh, there will be some memory usage uh, when you turn these parameters on so depending on your performance impact or depending on the agreement with the customer you 
can turn these parameters on and uh, you can get snapshot okay so this for buffer pool this is for locks this for so sorts statements uh, for tables right unit of work timestamps so uh, basically for all those things and uh, we also have a health monitor so it basically monitors your database and instance health and um, uh, you can have uh, like uh, thresholds and you can get emails generated so in case of something uh, you know if you don't have a proper monitoring in place and you want to use the health monitor uh, basically you can do those things you can manually check um, thresholds of uh, logs logs buffer pools and all those things and it will send you an email basically okay and uh, then we have the system ADM group okay uh, it says DB to GRP here now this particular parameter will be updated when you create the instance itself okay uh, one important thing you should understand is that we we do not create database users at the database uh, at the database level for DB in DB2 okay in Oracle I think uh, you can create users uh, at the database level here everything is done at the OS level okay so when we uh, when we install or when we create the instance we need to make sure that we create the user first right uh, if you go through my installation um, video you can you will you know that uh, so basically first you have to create the user and when you create the user we have to assign that user to some group right so my user belong to db2 grp here system medium okay so when i created the instance automatically it has taken that parameter and it has updated here okay so basically it is a super user um, kind of thing okay and below that we have the system control group basically it can do anything at the architecture level of the database uh, but nothing at the data level okay again you have the maintenance group uh, which uh, we can do your backups okay so just to isolate different groups so that uh, they don't mess up the database okay and this monitoring group they can take snapshot on the data on the database and they can uh, do different things so basically you need to create the users and groups at the OS level and then you can map it by updating these parameters over here okay for example I want to create uh, a user and uh, I want him only to do some snapshot on the database right so what I will do is one I'll create a user at the OS level I'll create um, I'll assign it to a group and then I'll update the group here so basically he can come and do all the snapshot uh, kind of things on that database okay I'll skip these parameters for the moment and uh, one important parameter is the default DB path okay it is set to home DB to NST1 here now uh, when we create the database right uh, if we don't explicitly give a path for database during the creation of the database uh, it will fetch the information from here okay so the database important uh, configuration files everything will be copied to this location by default if you do not give the path during the creation of the database okay so basically this is the default uh, database path now uh, we have the monitoring heap size okay um, so basically I spoke about the monitoring some of the parameters like the mon heap and uh, sorry the dep database buffer pool um, and the database locks and all those kind of things we can monitor right so for the memory for those uh, particular parameters will go from here okay so here I've set this value to automatic uh, depending on your uh, configuration you can change it to a manual value also okay and one most important thing to note here is that all these values are in 4 KB pages okay so basically you have to do some reverse calculation on uh, from MB or GB to 4 KB pages and you have to update the value on 4 KB pages okay if we have difficulty in uh, um, like uh, gathering the actual value the 4k value uh, I have made an app uh, on the Android okay you can you can have a look at this uh, uh, app A C O N V, okay. So basically, it does the conversion from uh, GB, KB, MB bytes, and 4 KB pages to uh, reverse uh, everything it can do, all, all kind of conversions, okay. 
it's available only on the android uh, it's not on the ios okay and again we have uh, the memory for java heap size and uh, if you have enabled auditing for your database then it will be using this memory from here the audit buffer size okay uh, this all this parameter consume very less memory uh, the instant memory this is the most and very important parameter in the dbm configuration because this uh, this is the, uh, your upper limit uh, of the memory which your databases can use okay so for example if i set this value to 10 gb and you have 10 database 10 databases that means that your 10 database can use only up to 10 gb of this instant memory so it's very important to understand uh, how this will work okay um, so i'm going to stop this tutorial at this point and in my next video i'm just going to talk about the instance memory in detail okay thanks a lot for watching